welcome to the machine x webinar so today we are going to discuss about how recommendation systems can drive retail success also we will discuss about uh, how machine learning is driving retail success and what actually retail uh, like domain is so let's begin with our agenda for today so today we are first we will go through machine learning in the retail industry then some top use cases of machine learning in retail then we will see how a recommendation system or recommendation engine actually works then i have an interesting case study demonstrating the building of recommendation engine so so before like before we jump into the main topic i would like to talk a little bit about our try machine x so machine x is a group of data wizards who love to play with data and create wonders out of it as you can see uh, on the screen we are a team of data scientists and engineers with a product mindset like mindset who deliver competitive business advantages so we love to play with data and like to create wonders out of it and we are the group of thinkers who love to contribute to the development of artificial intelligence and machine learning so and hence we like we had done some like wonderful things making intelligent products using machine learning and ai we usually do internal knowledge sharing sessions as company culture and release them on youtube so that others can also view and learn from it apart from sharing our knowledge about machine learning and artificial intelligence we are going to release one of our product called magad magad is an intelligent meeting assistant tool which can do a lot of wonders while attending meetings it will give video recording facility and along with that it will give the artificial intelligence powered features like automatic ac action item generation so that you can like give some moms minutes of meeting to the person who had not attend the meeting and uh, also it will give emotional analysis and the facial detection features and many more as you might have already imagined if you have these powers while do doing meeting you can compare yourself with sherlock holmes this is how our maggot dashboard is looking like for now of course we are going to like add some more and more features uh, to magad in coming time apart from magad we are working uh, on an intelligent marketing tool called fishai fishai is a product or a tool which can help you in finding possible target companies like in the screenshot i had opted for a company in sector artificial intelligence uh, which locates located in united states and have an employee size of 0 to 500 also we had make an machine learning library in scala named ks ai so machine uh, ks ai is in machine learning plus scala library uh, like uh, before moving to python we were like scala lover here at nolders so we think why not and machine learning library in scala and we just go through it and uh, make that for ourselves you can also go through and use ks ai just search ks ai on github and you can also contribute uh, to that library if you are also in scala lover so these are few things few more things we are doing here at nolders and we machine x doing here at nolders we have our innovation labs where we are doing some in really interesting projects uh, we regularly do knowledge sharing sessions as in company company culture uh, we regularly contribute to the society of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence through blogs you can see all our blogs on like nolders blogs page uh, also we have some great and certified ai engineers and machine learning engineers so this was about uh, our tribe machine x now move to our main agenda that is machine learning in retail so we are all aware of the troves of data retail businesses generate on a daily basis 
However, this repository of uh, critical data is worthless if it cannot be translated into valuable insights into the customer's mind or market trend. While all the data is being generated and like uh, collected, it is not being used efficiently. This paves way for decision makers to employ predictive analytics to drive the best value of all the data gathered and it can ensure better sales outcome in the near, near future. Nowadays, data proves to be a powerful pushing force of the industry. Or we can say data is like fuel for many of the businesses nowadays. Big companies representing diverse trade ship like uh, to make use of the beneficial value of data. Thus, data has become one of the greatest or important uh, for those willing to take profitable decisions concerning concerning the business. Moreover, uh, through analysis of waste, um, like vast amount of data allows influencing or rather manipulating the customer's decision. Numerous flows of information along with channels of communication are used for this purpose. The retailers manage to analyze data and develop a like a psychological portrait of a customer to learn his or her sore points. Thereby, a customer tends to be easily influenced by the tricks developed by the retailers by using uh, like this data analysis and machine learning uh, by predicting his behavior. So these are some like interesting use cases of uh, machine learning in retail sector. The first one is market basket analysis. So it may be regarded as a traditional tool of data analysis in retail. The retailers have been making a profit out of it for years. Uh, this, uh, this process mainly depends on the organization of a considerable amount of data collected by a customer's transaction. Future decisions and choice may be predicted on a large scale by, the, by this tool knowledge of the present item in the basket along with all likes, dislikes and the previews are beneficial for a retailer in the spares of layout in like organization. So the analysis is usually conducted by a rule mining algorithm. Beforehand, the data undertake transformation from data frame format to simple transactions. A simply tailored function accept the data splits it according to the to like some differentiating factors and deletes the useless data and then this data is the, our input on its basis the association link between the product are built it becomes possible due to the association rule application and also the insight information largely contribute to the improvement uh, of the development uh, like strategies and marketing techniques of the retailer. So the next one is warranty analytics. Warranty analytics enter the sphere of retail as a tool of warranty claims monitoring, detection of fraudulent uh, activity, reducing cost and increasing quality. Uh, increasing the quality of your means sales and uh, your retail market. So the data is uh, like transformed into actionable real time plans, insights and recommendations via segmentation analysis or we can like segmentation analysis. Okay. So the method of detecting uh, like are quite complicated as far as they deal with the like intensive data flows. They concentrate on the dis detecting an anomalies in the warranty claims. Powerful internet data platforms speed up the analysis process of a significant amount of warranty claims. This is an excellent chance for retailers to turn warranty challenges into actionable, like actionable intelligence. Next one is price optimization. So having the right price for both the customer and the retailers is a sec like significant advantage brought by the optimization mechanisms. So the price formation process depends only like not only on the cost to like uh, cost to produce an item but on a wallet of a typical customer and the competitors offers. The tools for data analysis bring this issue to a new level of its approaching.
price optimization tools include numerous like online tricks as well as secret customer approach the data gained from the multi-channel sources define the flexibility of prices taking into consideration the location and individual buying attitude of a customer seasoning and the customer's price like customer's pricing the computation of a extreme in values along with frequency tables is a appropriate instrument to make the variable evaluation and like uh, we can say perfect distributions for the predictors and the profit response the algorithm uh, like presuppose customer segmentation to define the response to change in prices thus we can say the cost that meet corporate goals may be determined so next one is inventory management we all are like aware about inventory management so like inventory as it is uh, concerns stocking goods for their future use in this in its turn uh, it refers to stocking like stocking goods in order to use them in times of crisis the retailers aim to provide a proper product at the right time in a proper condition or we can say at a proper place at this in this regard the stock and uh, supply chains are deeply analyzed powerful machine learning algorithms and data analysis platform detect patterns correlation among the elements and supply chains via consistently uh, like consistently uh, adjusting and developing parameters and value the algorithm defines the optimal stock and inventory strategies the analysts uh, spot the pattern of high demand and develop strategies for emerging sales trend uh, optimize delivery and manage the stock implementation like implementing the data received this one is like uh, interesting when i was going through like some of the use cases of machine learning in retail so that is location of new store for new stores for data uh, it was also a new use case for me also when i was going through it so data science proves to be uh, extremely efficient about the issues of new stores location usually to make such a decision a great deal of data analysis is to be done the algorithm is simple through very efficient the analysts uh, like explore the online customers data paying great attention to the demographic factor uh, the coincidences like in zip codes and location give a basis of for understanding the potential of the market also special settings concern the location of other shops are taken into account as well as that the retailers network analysis is performed the algorithm find the solution by connect like uh, connection all this point the retailers easily adds this data to his platform to enrich the analysis opportunity for another sphere of its activity uh, so the another uh, like uh, use case is customer segment like sentiment analysis so customer sentiment and sentiment like analysis is not a brand new tool in this industry uh, although it is using by different industries also however since the active implementation of data science it has become less expensive and time consuming nowadays the use of focus groups and customer polls is no longer needed machine learning algorithms provide the basis for sentiment analysis the analysts can perform the brand customer segment like sentiment analysis by data received from social networks and online services feedback social media sources are readily like available so this is why it is much easier to implement analytics on social platforms sentiment analytics uses languages uh, like processing to track words bearing a positive or negative attitude of a customer this feedback become a background for service uh, like services improvement the analyst performs sentiment analysis on the basis of natural language processing text analysis to extract defining positive neutral or negative sentiments 
the algorithms go through all the meaningful layer of speech all the spotted sentiments because like belong to certain category or bucket or the degree uh, and the output is a sentiment rating is one of the category mentioned above like uh, in this diagram and like and the overall sentiment of the text so uh, these were the use cases like some different use cases from our agenda so let's come to our main agenda for today and that is recommendation system so in this in today's world every customer is faced with a multiple choices for example if i am going i am looking for a book to read without any specific idea of what uh, i want there is a wide range of possibilities how my search might pan out i might waste a lot of time browsing around on internet trawling through various sites hoping to strike gold i might look for recommendations from other people but if there was a site or application which could recommend me books based on what i have read previously that would be a massive help instead of wasting time on various sites i could just log in and uh, like there there could be 10 recommendations uh, like recommended books tailored to my taste this is what recommendation engine do and their power is blocked like harsh by most businesses these days from amazon to netflix google to good like good reads recommendation engines are one of the most widely used application of machine learning techniques so the main, one of the main question is how we can like uh, how we can recommend uh, items to the user so there are two things we can recommend items to a user which are most popular among the users second we can dive like divide the users into multiple segment based on their uh, preferences or users uh, features and recommend items to them based on the segment they belong to but both of these points or these methods have their drawbacks in the first case the most popular items would be same for each user so everywhere everybody will see the same recommendations while in the second case as the number of user increases the number of features will also increase so classifying the users into various segments will be a like hectic or i can say very difficult task so the main problem here is that we are unable to tailor recommendations based on the specific in interest of the users it's like amazon is recommending you to buy a laptop just because it's being bought by a majority of shoppers but thankfully amazon does not recommend products using the above mentioned approach they use some personalized methods which help them in recommending products more accurately so let's now focus how a recommendation engine work by going through few steps which involved in recommendation system so first one is data collection so this is the first and most uh, crucial step for building a recommendation engine the data can be collected by two mean explicitly and implicitly explicit data is information that is provided uh, like intentionally uh, for example input from the users such as movie rating uh, like uh, some movie rating or we we can see that in our next one so where we were uh, okay so implicit data is the information that is not provided intentionally but gathered from uh, available data streams like search history clicks and the order history so we can see both of them in like our next slide so this is our uh, like amazon example how they are recommended or collecting data from us so uh, this is the order history of a user is recorded by amazon which is an example of implicit mode of data collection so uh, our next uh, like important step is data storage the amount of data dictates 
how good the recommendation of the model can get. For example, uh, in a movie recommendation system, the more ratings user give to the movies, the better uh, the recommendation get for the users. So the type of data plays an important uh, like role in deciding the type of the storage that has been to used. This type of storage could in like include a standard SQL database or a no SQL database or some kind of object storage. So uh, after collecting like data and storing the data, we have to filter it uh, as to extract relevant information required to make the final recommendations. So there are various algorithms that helps us uh, like helps us to uh, make the filtration process easier. So let's go through them. But before uh, going through them, let's uh, see a few examples. So on our left, there is an Amazon recommending for you. And on the right, uh, it's Netflix recommending like some something it's happening. So um, in both of these example, uh, Amazon is recommending some products to you and Netflix is leveraging this uh, recommendation engines to like giving you top movies according to your taste or according to your preferences. So um, recommendation engines usually consist of uh, like two things. First is user and the second is items. So here uh, on the left, uh, there are users and the right, we, I have taken example of Netflix. Uh, it's uh, like uh, we match down, uh, like match the columns in our school time. So this is how recommendation system work. Uh, we match, we match the user's preferences with the movies and uh, we match the pre like preferences of particular user with their preferences or their rating and uh, whatever data we collected from uh, the activity of user. So implementing a like uh, and recommendation system. Uh, now let's discuss about it. But first in this like in this tab like thing, uh, we can easily th like see the trending movies recommended by Netflix. So uh, when a user uh, like when we don't have they don't have data uh, of a particular user or a new user comes in and uh, uh, like oh, we have to recommend something to them. So this is how Netflix is doing it. So uh, Netflix is giving all the movies uh, which are like in trend by like uh, noticing the user ratings given by different users and the comments and everything a user uh, is giving to the movies and how many number of times these movies are watched by the users. So this is called the trending uh, as we all know. So, so now see uh, how to implementing uh, like implementations of uh, an recommendation system. So there are a few things like first is uh, like our content based uh, and uh, second is our collaborative like collaborative uh, filtering so content based is uh, actually on the left side let's see content based first so the content based is we have a user who likes to like read uh, let me give you and let's take out the pointer so here we have a user who likes to read this type of book or any other document so we will find something related to this uh, like similar to this uh, article or the book uh, it can be a same author it can be a same publisher or uh, the content in in both of these uh, article or novel or book so this is how content based is actually work and uh, this is our collaborating filtering uh, as we can see uh, there are two users two similar users so this is the book. Uh, these are the books like uh, both users used to read, or this is this can be anything like movie, book, article, or any post. 
So we can simply like uh, use this data for recommendation. So uh, we can see that uh, both of these users are reading these uh, type of articles. So and uh, like uh, the girl in the left uh, is also read this book. So we can like uh, recommend this book to him also because in the previous data or previous history of data, uh, we noticed that both of these users have like same kind of like taste about uh, reading things or watching movies. So uh, first let's uh, like talk about content based filtering. So content, okay. So for example, uh, if a person has liked the movie Inception, then this algorithm uh, will recommend movies that falls under the same genre. But how does the algorithm understand which genre to pick and recommend movies from? Consider the example of the Netflix. They save all the information related to each user in a vector form. This vector like contains the past behavior of the user that is the movie liked disliked by the user and the rating given by them this vector is known as profile vector and all the information related to the movie is stored in another vector that is called item vector so item vector contain all the detail of each movie like genre cast and the director of the movie so the content based filtering algorithm find the cosine of cosine of the angle between the profile vector and item vector so cosine similarity like uh, okay i have some example for you so i will just uh, uh, it will be more as understanding through this example so we have these two text text a and text b can you guys please tell me is there is any similarity between these two texts? Is this is these texts are uh, like similar in which mean and how? Okay, someone is saying that uh, both of the texts contain same words. Uh, you are correct. Okay, so. Uh, so Rahul is like correct in his answer. Uh, these uh, uh, like words or sentences contain similar words. So let's uh, like uh, draw a distance between these two vectors or making two vectors. So a lot of people like uh, feared when we say about the vectors. I was also not uh, like like these vectors a lot, but when I entered the data science world, I have to like learn and love these uh, kind of things. So uh, I have two axes here or the two dimensions. First is Paris and the second is London. Can anyone tell me why I have these two axes only? Why not a third dimension or third axis? I'm waiting guys. Can I have your answer? Uh, okay, Abhishek is saying that uh, we might not need them. So please, can you be more specific about it? Okay, let me tell you. So um, here uh, we have two text, text A and text B. It contains two common words only, like London, first one contain London two times, Paris one time, and the second one contain London one time and Paris two time. That's why we have two axes or two dimensions here. If we have the third word common between these two texts or the three, four, or five, fifth thing, so we have to go like take uh, third, fourth, and fifth dimension or the axis. So uh, we can like just draw the vectors of these points like uh, from zero zero to one two for the text B and the, for text A to 002 to 1 according to their frequency of a word. So the, then we have to like uh, calculate something called uh, like uh, uh, 
Euclid, Euclidean distance. So Euclidean distance uh, is like similar items which lie in the close proximity to each other if plotted in a n dimension say. So we can calculate the distance between the item based on that distance. Recommend item to the user uh, like the formula of the Euclidean distance and uh, we all know the formula so I didn't like mention it here. So uh, there are many other things also like uh, Pearson cor correlations and different things. So a major drawback of this algorithm is that it is limited to recommending items that are of the same type. It will never recommend products which uh, the user has not bought or liked in the past. So if a user has watched or liked only action movies in the past, the system will recommend only action movies so it is a very narrow way of building an engine to improve these type of system we need an algorithm or uh, an like algorithm that can recommend items not just based on the content but the behavior of user as well so uh, here we here a different algorithm comes that is collaborating like collaborative filtering so let's uh, understand this with example 2 so if a person A likes three movies, say uh, Interstellar, Inception, and uh, uh, like uh, Predestination, okay. And the person B likes Inception, Predestination, and The Prestige. Then they have almost similar interest. We can say that the person can certainly that A should like The Prestige and B should like Interstellar. The collaborative filtering algorithm uses user behavior for recommended, like recommending items. This is one of the most commonly used algorithm in the in industry as it is not dependent on any uh, like additional information. There are different type of collaborating filtering techniques and uh, let's look on them. So the first one is user user collaborating filtering. This algorithm first finds similarity between users based on this similarity score. It then pick out the most similar users and recommend products which these similar users have liked or bought uh, previously. In terms of our movie example from earlier, this algorithm finds the similarity between each user based on the rating they have previously given to different movies. The prediction of an item for a user U is calculated by computing the weighted sum of the user rating given by other user for an like to an item I. So now like we have the rating for users in profile vector like uh, when we calculate uh, like our prediction PU. So we can like uh, do uh, some more steps like for predicting we need the similarity between the user u and v if we have an, these users and we make use of Pearson correlation as I already told you and the prediction can be calculated using the similarity value. So the algorithm first of all calculate the similarity between each user and then based on each similarity calculates the prediction. So user having higher correlation with trend to be the similar. So uh, in this like uh, like the, the this algorithm is quite time consuming as it involves a lot of calculating the similarity for each user and then calculating prediction for each similarity score. So one way of handling this problem is to select only a few users neighbors instead of uh, like make predictions uh, instead of making predictions for all similarity values we choose only few similarity values. So uh, Next one is item item collaborative, collaborative filtering. So in this algorithm, we compute the similarity between each pair of items. Uh, so in our case, we will find similarity between each movie pairs and based on that, we will recommend similar movies which are likely uh, like liked by the user in the past. This algorithm works similar to user user collaborating or collaborative filtering with a little bit of change. Instead of taking the weighted sum of rating of user neighbor, we take the weighted sum of ratings of item neighbors and the prediction is given by some certain formulas. And then we make a matrix according to 
like one is the user metrics and other other is the like uh, name of the movies okay so let's move so these these were the type of like our collaborative filtering and uh, we have discussed about content based and like collaborative filtering uh, so let's have a small demo so here i had like uh, make my like demo on i'm using jupyter notebook so jupyter notebook is like popular among most of the data scientists to make pro projects so uh, the problem statement is in this data challenge we are building like collaborating filtering model for recommending like product items so the steps below aim to recommend users uh, like their top 10 items to place in their basket so the final output will be a csv file in the output folder and a like function that search for a recommendation list based on a specific user so here we have the we will have the input as an user or the customer id of that user and we will return the ranked list of the items or the products the, that the user is most likely to want to put in his basket. So suppose we, when you open your Amazon page or your Amazon dashboard, there are a number of uh, like uh, products which are recommended by Amazon for you uh, that may be liked by you or you want to add them in your cart. So here I imported my modules like Pandas and NumPy for data manipulation and uh, integrate for performing model selection and evaluation so i have uh, here i had like mentioned everything above the cells because uh if you guys like want this notebook or this presentation you can simply like mail me i think my mail id is already shared with you all uh, through this platform go to webinar so you can simply mail me all your questions and like request for this presentation or the notebook so here I had like uh, import pandas at PD uh, as an object PD and NumPy at the time and theory create for creating our model or selecting our model for uh, like uh, uh, for our recommendation engine. And I had used uh, uh, scikit-learn library uh, to split my data set into train and test. Like we all familiar with the uh, uh, splitting the data set into two parts for, for first for the training phase and the second for the testing phase so next we will like load our data set i had load my there are two data set first is recommend uh, recommend one csv file consists of list of thousand customers id to recommend as output and second one is consist of user transitions all the transition user had made in the in his past like uh in his past uh, history or like actions so when i print this customer shape or the customer file shape so it is like we i have thousands uh, customer data or their ids and uh, when i like print the transitions csv so it's like it is like i have 62 like nearly 62 thousands of transition data so now uh, the most important like uh, a step in doing any data science project is data preparation or we can say pre-processing of data so our goal here is to break down each list uh, of items into the products uh, column into rows and count the number of products bought by user so guys i have like uh, i didn't have a lot of time so i'm going a little bit fast here and uh, like uh, i can send you this file and uh, I had I have also a blog written on this uh, like this project so I will also share that blog with you guys so here I split my product items uh, uh, by using that um, apply method and uh, here is the output I have customer IDs and number of like products so next uh, I have organized a like table into data frame with uh, customer ID and single product ID and purchase count how many times that pro product is like purchased. So this is my customer ID and uh, this is my product ID and this is how many times uh, a customer has purchased that particular product. Now let's uh, create data with user uh, like item and target field. So this table will be an input for modeling la later. So in this case, our user is customer ID 
like product ID and purchase count. So this is how I had like did this task. And when I like uh, see head of my data, so this is how it's look like. So this is my customer ID, product ID and purchase count. And it is in like more uh, structured way. Like it is now in structured way. So let's, uh, uh, so here uh, is, is an interesting thing to see. So I had created a dummy. So dummy for like making whether a customer bought that item or not. So if one buys an item, then purchase dummy as like marked as one. So why create a dummy instead of uh, normalizing it? You, you can ask this. So normalizing the purchase count say by each users would not uh, work because uh, customers may have different buying frequency, do not have the same taste. So that's why I had created our dummy like uh, dummy for that purpose. And I had also like uh, used normalize. So to do this, we normalize like purchase for frequency of each item across users by like first creating a user item matrix as follow. So you can see this output here. So when I like uh, see the shape of my this normalized uh, matrix. So this is how this is what my shape of mat normalized matrix is. Uh, so like uh, move forward for the modeling part. So we are creating a table for input and like as an input to our modeling part. So this is how like I'm giving my uh, like column a name uh, scaled purchase frequency because I had scaled it to, uh, to a similar range of value. So this is our new data set or training data set looks like I have same customer ID, product ID. And now I haven't scaled purchase frequency. So our model can be more accurate in recommending things to the user. So uh, we are like defining a function for normalized data. So this is same as the previous one. So we can like normalize the, their purchase history from zero to one. So zero like with one being most number of purchases for an item and zero count for the like zero for the zero so so now i have used like uh, scikit-learn for like splitting my training and testing data set so i am like sp splitting my training and testing into 80 to 20 percent uh, like ratio so guys i am like running out of the time so now let's see the main puzzle so this is my baseline model so before running a more complicated approach such as collaborative filtering, I am like seeing the baseline model. So here I had like made a popularity model uh, and uh, like I had like trained it on my data set. This is my user to recommend and uh, I had displayed it uh, as an output. Then I had made an like uh, different type of approaches like Pearson cor like correlation and the cosine one. And I just trained uh, my model uh, to recommend the things. And uh, using the dummy data too, I had like, this is my output of uh, model, like predicting model, or we can say. So I had used this uh, like uh, many approaches to make my recommendation engine, like uh, Pearson similarity. So this is the formula of Pearson similarity. So I had also like used Pearson uh, similarity method. So we have to simply like uh, give the, give the parameter of model uh, to Pearson and uh, give our target variable that is purchase count. So here, here is how our output is look like. So let me like take you through to the output. And this is my RMSE, uh, like uh, the score, which is like, uh, achieved by my recommendation model. So let me go through you to the output. So when I completed like uh, making my model, so it is very like, uh, very like uh, hectic task to like select which model is like good for my recommendation engine. So based on RMSE, I can like uh, select which one is like more accurate or uh, which I can work with. So based on the RMSE score, I selected my model and my final output, uh, uh, I can like uh, create with simply TC, a TC dot item similarity recommender dot create. 
So here I am like creating my output file or the recommending things to a particular user. Uh, also, we can see like uh, here, this is my output file. So a part, for a particular customer, we are like predicting or recommending number of products like pr product with the ID 226 to 247 to 30. And uh, what will happen with the application? This application is whenever uh, like suppose a customer with ID 21. So whenever he logged in in your like uh, product or the website, so you can like uh, you have the previous transition of that particular user or the customer. So you can simply recommend these number of products to him, like product number two to six or two four seven. Uh, suppose a person is like uh, uh, in your previous transition, a person is like uh, uh, searching for um, uh, like vehicle four four wheeler vehicle so you can like uh, uh, recommend him a car or something like uh, which he was searching previously and uh, suppose any other another customer comes with a customer id 16 so you can give this number of uh, like products to him so so these these customers were like uh, in the same segment so it is like giving them same number of recommendation products so in this exercise we were like able to traverse a step by step process for making recommendations to customer we used collaborating filtering approaches with cosine and pearson measure and compare the models with our baseline popularity model we also prepared three data set or the sets of data that include regular buying count a buying dummy as well as normalized purchase frequency as our target variable using rmse uh, like precision and recall we evaluate our models or our best model and observe the impact of personalization finally we selected the cosine approach in our dummy purchase data and uh, we like simply like take our output uh, from that model so this is how you can like make a recommendation system. So if you have any question, just like you can write to me or you can like uh, connect, stay in touch with us uh, with ID hello at the rate knowledge.com or you can simply like uh, join us on Twitter. So thank you guys for joining this webinar. Uh, I hope you will like, like, like this a webinar and i am eagerly eagerly like waiting for your feedback so do give feedbacks you can send it send these feedbacks to my mail address so feed, feedbacks are the only things which can help me in improving myself and like whatever things you can you want to like uh, see in the our future webinars you can also like uh, suggest us the topics or any particular technology or in machine learning and not artificial intelligence so thank you guys for joining us